Good morning, everybody. It's good to be in God's house. Thank you all for being with us. And happy Father's Day to all our dads. And we're just looking forward to a good day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We, uh, we have so much to be thankful for. And we also have so many needs in our congregation. And we're thankful that God sees each one and he takes care of each one. And um, we want to continue to remember those that are in the hospital. We have several and that the Lord would continue to touch them and move on them. And we thank the Lord for those that uh, have been sick and they're uh, doing better and they're with us today. So we thank the Lord for that. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And maybe you have a, a need on your heart you'd like to signify by an upraised hand. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful God sees each and every need. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would be with this time that we have together. We thank you for all of our dads, whether they're with us or not able to be with us. We ask that you would just uh, give our dads a special day in you. We pray that you would uh, be with each need that is represented. Be with those that are in the hospital that need a touch from you. Father, we pray you just undertake in a mighty way. Lord, be with those that aren't able to be here today due to sickness or other things uh, or due to, to illness and pain. We pray you'd raise them up. Be with this service. May everything that's said and done honor and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his court with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made I will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad yes he has made me glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Every good and every perfect gift from above comes down from the Father of lights, whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. We're thankful we serve a heavenly Father. We have a heavenly Father that does not change. He is a good, good Father. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think your life, but I've heard the tender whisper of love. Tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. 
unattainable I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love You're a good, good father to us How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. How deep the Father's love for us. How marvelous.
shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful is my savior's love for me amen Happy Father's Day to everyone, and we're thankful for all of our dads, and we're thankful for this time we can come and celebrate Father's Day, and um, I will have to say that this part of the service on Father's Day is a whole lot easier than it is on Mother's Day. The reason I say that is I have to ask ages, and it's always hard because I was taught you never ask a lady their age. But guys, it's okay. We honor three special dads. We're going to honor all our dads in just a moment. But we honor three special dads um, with a Lowe's gift card. By the way, um, this is a new church policy. These Lowe's gift cards that go to the dads that win are never to be used for honeydew projects or spent on things that the wife wants. It's for dads. Sorry, that's, that's a new church rule, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. If I keep on, I may be accused of lying, so I better hush. Uh, so here we go. We're going to first honor the oldest dad in our midst today. And I want to ask ages, Carl, how old are you? We have any dad older than 66. Congratulations, Brother Carl. All right. Now we're going to honor the youngest dad. Kyle, how old are you? You think 33? 33. I think he gets it, unless, unless anybody wants to debate that. Okay, he'll be... Help him, Mama. Help him. Help him out. Okay. Well, it's a, it's actual age, not how how much you look there. And then the last one is for the dad who has the most children with them in service today. Well, hmm. I think Jeremy, you won by Olivia. So congratulations. Congratulations. So we, uh, we always have fun with that and uh, enjoy those gift cards. And uh, God bless you. We're so happy to have you. And so uh, glad we could honor you today. Um, normally, uh, at this time, Sister Angie reads a poem for us. However, she has been under the weather, and I know her. If I'd asked her to do this today, she would have, even if she didn't feel like it. So, uh, so that she'll get better, so that we have many more years for her to read these later, I'm going to read this one today in her absence. I won't do it as good, and you'll just have to close your eyes and pretend I'm her. Fathers are wonderful people. Fathers are wonderful people and too little understood. We do not sing their praises as often as we should. For somehow, Father seems to be the man who pays the bills, while Mother binds up little hurts and nurses all our ills. And Father struggles daily to live up to his image as protector and provider and hero of the scrimmage. And perhaps that is the reason we sometimes get the notion that fathers are not all subject to that thing that we call emotion. But if you look deep inside Dad's heart, where no one else can see, you'll find he's sentimental and as soft as he can be. 
But he's too busy every day in the grueling race of life. He leaves the sentimental stuff to his partner and his wife. But fathers are just wonderful in a million different ways. And they merit loving compliments and accolades of praise. For the only reason dad aspires to fortune and success is to make the family proud of him and to bring them happiness. And like our Heavenly Father, he's a guardian and a guide. Somehow that we can count on and someone that will always be on our side. Helen Steiner writes with that. We want to take opportunity to honor all our dads, and let's give them a round of applause. And we're going to ask them, all of the dads, to come up and uh, stand up here in front. And then we're going to ask uh, the Marshall kids and the Campbell kids if you guys will come and help hand out our Father's Day gifts. Okay? So all the dads, come on up. And by the way, the gifts this year are in different sized bags, but they're all the same. And the reason that we have different sized bags is these bags are very special. They're from another nation, donation. And uh, they were donated. They are Hallmark bags. They're very nice, and the paper and all that was donated. They're just different sizes. So each dad gets one bag, so... Um, we may be able to give all these dads just the same size. So, is everybody up here? All right. So, make sure everybody gets one of those. We got them? Everybody got one? Okay. If, um, also we have, we have extras. So, we will, um, if your dad is not here, uh, we, we've got a list of those that aren't here, and we'll try to get them to them when they come again. Or uh, if they're ill and can't be here, we'll give it to somebody to give to them, okay? Let's give our dads a round of applause. All right. Congratulations, guys. And, uh, oh, by the way, you, you guys can be seated. Uh, Brother Carl, if you just sit that down, he's going to come up and sing for us. But uh, by the way, another rule, the... Uh, Gifts that's in the bag, I already had uh, one lady that knew what we were giving out saying that's going to be mine. No. Those are for dad, not for you. So, Brother Carl is going to come and bring a song at this time. You know us old gray heads, my age air dads were what they call the greatest generation and I did this genetic test and that enabled me to do a bunch of checking on my family and I looked at my dad's military enlistment papers. Five seven and a hundred and thirty pounds. And they saved the world. Most of the fellows in that generation, that's about the size of them. And they saved the world for us. And most of them are gone now. But we should never forget that sacrifice of our dads from that time, the 40s and 50s, you know. But... Uh, The years have been many, the years have been long, but at last I'm returning to daddy and home. 
He's looking my way And I clearly can see God bless my old daddy He knew it was me There's snow in his hair And the help put it there A halo of worry and care As my daddy grows old He's more precious and go for a cherish the snow in his hand his shoulders were bent with the weight of the year I scarcely could hold back the flood tide of tears he walked with the as he stumbled along Coming to meet me And welcome me home There's snow in his hair And I help put it there A halo of worry and care as my daddy grows old, he's more precious than gold, for I cherish the snow in his hand. While we sit at our table, my family's heads bowed low. My thoughts return to childhood to the finest man I know. He doesn't speak good English, he's just a simple man. But when he talks to the Lord, even a little child can understand. I was awful young and reckless, and the thought still comes to me. When I told Dad I felt that I was old enough to leave. He sat there at the table as I looked at his face. He never spoke another word till he said the table grace. He said, our gracious Heavenly Father, we're all gathered here today to give thanks and blessings, so humbly we pray. My oldest son is leaving, and I guess he knows what's best. But just in case, would you stand by and help him stand the test? And Lord, he's awful neglectful about church on Sunday morn. And if he gets with the wrong crowd, would you let him hold your arm? And if he flies too high, would you please clip his wings? But don't let him fall too hard. I know that you could handle things. Oh, I've tried my best from day to day to teach him right from wrong. And he's grown to be a fine young man, and he's always blessed our home. I pray for understanding and that he won't build upon the sand. But I won't worry half as much, Lord, if I know he's in your hands. And Lord, it won't be long I'll be coming home. We'll have some long talks. And Lord, don't make me wait too long. We beg, dear Lord, for guidance. Please cleanse us from our sin so we can all meet in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The table was silent as tears went down my face. And from that day on, I based my life on Father's table grace.
that's always been a favorite of mine and uh, of my dad's. We used to listen to that uh, every Father's Day on stained glass bluegrass. Uh, they would play it every day, and I thought I would love to do that sometime, and I never could uh, get the music right. And uh, one day Carl and I were talking a few years ago, and he's a big Flat and Scruggs fan like I am, and he knew the song, and uh, so I was thankful that he made a made a dream come true for me. I've always wanted to do that song. Such a good one and such a, a good message that the Lord is, He is our Heavenly Father, and I'm thankful for all that He does to lead us, guide us, and protect us. Father's Day. It is Father's Day. And, uh, you know, this day is hard for some. For those of us that don't have our dads with us or maybe have not had a dad in our life, uh, it is difficult. But also, in our society, dads kind of get the short end of the stick sometimes, don't they? Just as that poem talked about, you know, they don't always get the praise and recognition. If you don't think I'm right, look at uh, the expenditures for 2021 and 22, on average, now it's come up, because two years ago, on average, on Father's Day, the, the average cost of the gift for dad was $150, now it's $190, so guys, we're coming up, that's good, however, the average gift for mom is $219. Uh, if you want to, if you want to. Um, and I don't know about you, but I look back on the gifts that I gave my dad. And although I'm sure he loved them in his own way, I often think about that. Um, you know, we'd get him a tie. In fact, um, this tie I'm wearing today was his. Uh, and, 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 you know, my dad never wore ties much. He wore them to church occasionally, and so a tie was, you know, but that's what we got him. And he said, thanks, kids, and hugged us, and it was great. But, you know, or you get him some crazy T-shirt or something. Now, with my dad, if you got him a crazy T-shirt, you knew he was going to wear it, especially if it embarrassed my mom. Uh, I will never forget the year that we bought him a matching hat and shirt that said, I fought the lawn, and the lawn won. He wore that until it had holes in it. And in fact, my mom had almost convinced him to get rid of it until we went on vacation to Florida, and there he was with his green I fought the lawn hat, his white and green I fought the lawn shirt with holes kind of in the sides of it, his green golf shorts, black socks and sandals and you would have thought at Disney World he was Mickey Mouse because everybody was coming up to him and complimenting him on his shirt and his hat and asking him where he got it see honey I'm high fashion the next year we bought him a shirt that said I'm a dad this is as fashionable as I get so you know, dads are the unsung heroes of the family. And in fact, in our culture today, dads are being downplayed greatly in the media. In fact, most TV shows that depict dad, dad is an idiot. Just recently, the uh, top TV dad in television history has now, he's been replaced by what was Ward Cleaver and um, Father Knows Best, uh, Robert Young. He's been replaced. The number one dad in TV history, Homer Simpson. A loving idiot. You see, we just think it's entertainment, but as a culture... They're downplaying the influence of men and dads in the culture. There is a, a, 
African American conservative that says the biggest blight in the African American community is fatherlessness. Dads are important. Dads are to be celebrated. Dads are to be loved. And dads are to be treated special because they are important. Dads help shape us. Larry Bird, when asked why he was one of the uh, considered one of the toughest basketball players of his day, why he played hurt so often, why he just went out there and gave it all he had, even if he didn't feel good. They said, why do you do that? He said, because I watched my dad all my life get up at 4.30 every morning, put on some old worn-out work boots, and t- work at a menial job that he got no respect for every day and worked hard to provide for me and my family so that we would have the things we needed and some of the things we wanted. So if he can do that, I surely can get up every day, put my lace up my tennis shoes, and play a game of basketball. Fathers are important. In fact, it was a man whose last name was Smart whose wife passed away. He was a Civil War veteran, and he had all girls. He had six girls. His daughter, in the celebration of Mother's Day, remembered her daddy, who was mother and father, and began a campaign to start a holiday that was declared by Herbert Hoover what we now celebrate as Father's Day because dads make a difference. It was a dad who decided that he was not going to take what everybody said about his child. He was going to raise his child in the fear and the admonition of God and to do anything that that little boy had a mind to do. He taught him that I can't never could. And I'm thankful for my dad today that didn't listen to the doctors when they said don't let him do this and don't let him do that. He would always just look at me when I would say but dad they said I can't do that. Who said? I can't never could. But the doctors said well they're not here are they? But Mama said, well, she's not here right now, is she? A dad who pushed me to be the best that I could be and do the best that I could. Yeah, could they have uh, made life easier for me? Sure. But I'm thankful because in my life, my dad made a difference. He not only made a difference, he surrounded me with other men that poured into me that made a difference. So as we celebrate, today is hard because I don't have my dad with me. I wish I did. But I realized that not everybody had the privilege of a good dad. In fact, our our history is just overwhelmed with examples. Winston Churchill didn't have a good relationship with his father. His father would look at him every day and say, you are an absolute and utter failure. And he became the prime minister of England and championed them through a time that would become their finest hour. It was Albert Einstein who had a brilliant mind, figured out, theory of relativity and was such a smart and brilliant man but could never learn to relate to his own son. A.A. Milne who gave us Winnie the Pooh and used his own son Christopher Robin as the basis for Christopher Robin. In fact that's his real name. Even though Christopher Robin was the hero in Winnie the Pooh. 
A.A. Milne could never relate to the real Christopher Robin. And I understand that those stories are just a few, but there are so many more, and so many even more tragic. But here's the good news. We have a heavenly Father. We have a heavenly Father. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you even ask Him. Aren't you glad we have a Heavenly Father that knows what you need even when you don't? And before you do. The Isaacs sing a song that says, I have a Father who can. He looks high and He looks low. He follows me wherever I go. I have a father who can. Jesus really blew the minds of the disciples when he was teaching them how to pray. And he said, pray this way. Our father, Abba, which art in heaven. That word father is translated Abba. And it's not just a a cry of an infant. It means daddy. But it's not just for a child. In fact, in the Middle East, Abba is still used today. But scholars will tell us that it's not used as a childish term. It is used as a term of intimacy. It is a cry of the heart that we have a relationship with one that we can call daddy. It's not just a child relationship, but a relationship that is intimate and ongoing. When Jesus said, pray this way, Abba, we have a Father who can. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Here's the other side of this. See, we can't say that God is everyone's father. Now, we can say that as he's the creator, and we can say that that he is the, the, the creator of all mankind, but Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. So we have to go to the Father through Jesus. That's why God sent Jesus, because we were separated from God by sin. And when we ask Jesus to come into our life, you know, we always say, let Jesus come into your heart. It's not talking about that blood pumping muscle in your chest that looks like lasagna that's alive. It, it, it's that, it's the Spirit of God that comes in and changes it and changes us from the inside out. And then we have a relationship with the Father. We've been adopted, and God in Ephesians tells us, has Paul write, that the plan of adoption was set up way before the foundations of the world so that we would have a way to be with our Heavenly Father because we have a Father who can. So Father's Day may be hard, but you have a Heavenly Father that will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus also reminded us in John 1, 11 through 14, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them He gave power to become the, watch this, sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So as we look at that, we realize that we have a Father when we have accepted Jesus, even if today is hard, we have a Heavenly Father that loves us, that cares for us, that sent His only Son to die for us, and we have access to Him through Jesus, and that is very, very important. I remember my dad was a Boy Scout leader 
And also, he was just the kind of guy that everybody kind of buddied up to. And even the kids that, the guys that worked with him, if they had kids and they'd bring them to work or he'd see them, they'd run up, Mr. Fred, Mr. Fred. And the Boy Scouts called him Mr. Fred. The kids my mom babysat for called him Mr. Fred. And I remember one day when I was just a little fella, I looked at him and I said, Mr. Fred, what are we going to do today? And he looked at me and said, what would you call me? I said, Mr. Fred. He said, no, no, no. No, 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 no. The scout troop calls me Mr. Fred. They're good kids, but they're not mine. Only, and this was, this was um, before my sister. So he said, you are the only one that gets to call me daddy. No more Mr. Fred. Got it? Got it, daddy. Got it. You see, when we accept Jesus, yes, God is the Father and the Creator of all. But when we accept Jesus, then we get to call Him Daddy. And it doesn't matter if your earthly fathers let you down. And He will because He's human. It doesn't matter if your earthly father never was around. That Father, the Heavenly Father, will never leave you. I will never forget it. I remember I was uh, in my room shortly after my dad died, and I remembered always what my grandma told me. If he was angry at God, you might as well tell him because he knows anyway. And I was mad because I just graduated high school, and Daddy said when I turned 18, he, he's going to teach me how to drive, and we was gonna, he's going to give me that little red station wagon, and there's going to be big things happening in my world. And Dad passed away. And I remember sitting in that room and I had the music on. I always have music on. And I said, why? Why did you take my daddy from me, God? And God said, just as plain as I'm talking to you, your daddy may be gone, but your heavenly father's not. And I learned that day the everlasting love of the father. For Earthly fathers may let us down. But the heavenly father won't. And we have access to the throne room of heaven. I always love this picture. It's in Time Magazine and People. Of President Kennedy. And who's under the desk at the Oval Office? John Jr. John, John. There's other pictures where Carolyn is under the desk. And many times, while meetings were going on, he never chased them out from under the desk. He let them stay there in his presence. They were in the Oval Office of the White House. He is the President of the United States. But they were allowed to stay right in his presence under his desk no matter what was going on. Well, you see, when we accept Jesus as our Savior and He forgives us of our sins and we have a relationship with with our Father every day, all of the counsel of heaven, all of the principalities of earth are under God's feet and the world sets up and listens to the Heavenly Father, but we get to sit at His feet under His desk in His presence. We get to sit under his feet, at the feet of Jesus. There's a song that says, at the feet of Jesus I'll worship only. As we worship him in spirit and in truth, we can say, he is our father. And it doesn't matter today about your situation or your past. It doesn't matter where you've been.
It just matters whose you are. And if you accept Jesus as your Savior. And you know, when you say that today, that's not always accepted well. I've been told in public settings, well, you can pray, just don't pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Because they know that is the name above all names. And that's the only way to have a relationship with God. No matter where you've been, no matter how far you've come, God loves you and you've ne- you will never do anything too bad that he cannot forgive. And he loves you and you can sit in his presence. Maybe today you might be saved, but this is just a hard day. I understand that. Reminds me of the day that I came home from school and I was frustrated because they were making fun of me. And it was like open season on me that day. And I came home and I was tired of my leg braces. I was tired of all the things I had to do that nobody else had to do. And I took them off. And I threw them in the floor, and I just sat, and I was mad. And my mom came down, and she strapped me in my sit-board chair that I had to sit in. And I remember that day, I didn't even want to watch the TV, and she thought I was sick. Because it helped take past the time. And I did my homework on the little makeshift desk, and I just sat there, and I was mad. And I was hurt, and I was questioning my entire existence. And then I heard those familiar keys jingle in the back door. The back door swung open. What's up, number one son? Nothing, Dad. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Don't lie to me. Well, and he came around and he said, he looked at his watch. He said, looks like you got about 15 minutes more in your torture chair. I said, yeah. I said, what's wrong with you? I just shook my head and started to cry. What's wrong with you? So he unstrapped real quietly. You think I got good hearing. My mom had better than I do. And he unstrapped those straps so she couldn't hear. And he pulled me out of that chair and he carried me over to his big recliner and he put me on his lap and he sat down. He said, what's wrong? He said, you're just picking on me, Dad, and I don't want to go to school. I don't want to... Shh. It's okay. And mom's going to get mad because I didn't finish my time. It's okay. I got you. It's okay. I got you. It's okay. You see, when we allow God to be Father, things don't make sense at times. We may feel strapped down to circumstances and situations, but when we call out to him, he'll kick open that back door when we don't even expect him to be there. He'll pick us up and give us a God hug and say, shh, don't worry. Don't worry. I got this, and I got you. Even on a hard day, we can sit in the presence of the Father, and he's got us. You may be watching today and maybe you don't know Jesus as your Savior. We would invite you, wherever you are, to ask Him to come into your life, forgive you of your sin, and change you. And then get involved in a good Bible-believing church. Start reading His Word. Ask Him to help you. Call out to Him every day. Maybe you're discouraged today. It's a tough day. Maybe you know Jesus, but this is just a tough day. Call on the Heavenly Father, for He will comfort you. May God bless you.